So let's talk about some of the upcoming matchups with football analysts. Kasama natin ngayon si Mariel Benitez, Jing Hamlang, and Natasha Alquiroz. Guys, nagsimula na ang World Cup. <laughs> and uh, it's a uh, football talk every day uh, mm -hmm. from here on out here on the score. Thank you guys for coming. So um, let's start with yung uh, isa sa mga matches na talagang pinag-uusapan itong laban ng Portugal at ng Spain. Always a very interesting matchup. Number four in the world ng Portugal, number ten ng Spain ngayon. And there are a lot of angles to look at when it comes to this matchup, especially yung uh, firing ni Julen Lopetegui. So who wants to get the ball rolling? Who wants to comment on how <laughs> this firing will affect Spain? Well, I think that it's going to affect Spain, especially be that's your coach. You know, your uh -huh. coach makes makes the big calls, the lineup, the substitutions, knows your team, has been with the team for two years. Mm. And you know, behind the scenes you have players who are fighting to keep the coach in. But of course Rubiales, the Federation decided to take him out to sack the head coach. So, you know, you have players on different sides. So it's really going to be difficult and all eyes will really be on Spain coming onto the pitch because as a team, they're a great team, but now it's outside, um, outside circumstances that are going to affect how they play. Okay, and uh, we've been talking about uh, this the past week when it comes to football talk leading up to the World Cup. Si Cristiano Ronaldo, sinabi niya na may iniisip niya kung aalis pa siya ng Real Madrid. Tapos ang makakalaban niya na coach ngayon, si Julen Lopetegui, na biglang coach ng Spain. So, Jing, what are your thoughts on this and uh, the fact that Ronaldo has not scored a goal against Spain as well. I think that that record doesn't really mean much. Mm -hmm. The fact that he hasn't scored against Spain, it's more of the circumstance of how that match might have played out. Cristiano Ronaldo has played against the best defenses over the last decade. He's mm -hmm. played in La Liga, he's played for Real Madrid. He knows how to dissect the best possible defenses out there. If he gets an opportunity against Spain uh, in the upcoming match, uh, I'm confident that he'll be able to bury it and it's not going to play a factor in his decision making. But this whole dynamic with the coaching is very interesting for Spain because the federation was put in a tough spot. When the coaching um, announcement was made by Real Madrid, you essentially have no choice. You have to let him go because half of the team is from Real Madrid, half of the team is from Barcelona. Mm. So once he starts preferring players from Real Madrid, for example, it's going to be a sour taste in the mouth of the Barcelona players. So it's an unfortunate situation for Spain, but it's the right decision to make right now. And they're going to not have an opportunity to hide in this first game. It is against Portugal, the Euro champions. And it's going to be a big game. It's going to be a passionate game. And they're really going to get tested to see... Can they operate without this head coach that they've had for the last two years? The last time uh, Spain won the World Cup was back in 2010. And uh, Andres Iniesta is a player that people are looking out for because marami nagsasabi na this might be his last World Cup. He's already 34 years old. Tingin mo ba ito na ang last hura ni Iniesta? And what do you think, Mariel, is his legacy when it comes to Spanish football? Well, um, Iniesta just retired from club football and... He, you can say that he's one of the most loved players of Spain, whether you're a, a Madrid fan, a Barca fan, um, the Spanish, uh, I mean, the Spanish people just love him. He's a type of player who really um, dominated the midfield, can create, can score chances. And um, at, as a midfielder, when you hit that age 34, um, it's a little bit tough. Normally, you have older players playing defense or goalkeeper. And so it's tough. I think you can see that he's not at par maybe in the last 2010, 2014 World Cup. So definitely he would want, I mean, to win the World Cup this year and leave that as his legacy. All right. Should be a very interesting one. Spain versus Portugal. Let's move on to another matchup uh, featuring one of the top five teams in the world. Rank number five uh, as a FIFA World Rankings on Argentina. And they're going to be going up against uh, Iceland, who's ranked number 22. So, medyo malaki ang disparity. Natasha, may chance ba? Kahit pa paano ang, Ar ang Iceland dito sa Argentina? Well, technically, in the world of football, it's anyone's ball game. Mm -hmm. But I would still say that Argentina is favored to win this match. You know, they're a very complete team. And of course, you have Messi there leading that team. You know, no, no doubt of a fact that when Messi's on that pitch, you know, he brings that certain level of football. And of course, up on top, he has also Aguero and Dybala. Mm -hmm. So that you have those top-notch players who play league 
you know, in the best leagues in the world, and you're you're pretty sure that they'll bring it also in the World Cup. All right, I just I'm just curious. Uh, raise your hand if you think Lionel Messi is the best player in the world right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jing was kind of reluctant. Uh, why, why why is that? Why is that? Why 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 did you hesitate a no, little bit? I mean. Jing? Um, I've always been a fan of Cristiano Ronaldo. He was a uh, player for Manchester United, and that okay. affiliates me with him. And I think he's a spectacular player. Uh, it's just that maybe the stature, the physical stature of Lionel Messi, is closer to myself. <laughs> I'm not a, like a physical specimen that's six one and is ripped <laughs> like Cristiano Ronaldo. But the way he plays the game is so elegant. You know, it's so mm-hmm. clever that you can't help but be a fan of his, even when he's dissecting your own team. You know what I mean? He's he's caused a lot of heartache for Manchester United fans, but. You can't help but be a fan of the way Lionel Messi plays the game. Okay, and Marielle Benitez did not raise her hand. <laughs> Marielle, sino ba ang uh, number one para sa yo in, in football? I mean, there's always that debate with having Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. and Messi, and um, I think I admire Cristiano Ronaldo because one, as like Jing said, he has that physique. You know that he's hardworking. Mm-hmm. Um, he really worked. Um, through the ranks to become uh, one of the best, if not the best player. But just the same, I think I still am a fan of Messi. You Mm -hmm. have a guy who can create, who can dominate with such a small physique. And um, like what he said, he's probably more graceful when he plays as compared to Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's also beautiful to watch. Like you see him just going through. But I would like, I mean, I still am a Ronaldo fan, maybe over Messi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why are people saying, though, na baka ito na daw ang huling World Cup ni Messi when he's just 30 years old, and then you have Iniesta, who's 34, and they're saying, yun na yung last World, ito na yung last World Cup niya. Why do you think people are saying that? I think in terms of carrying the team, ah, it'll be his okay, last okay. World, okay. World Cup. I yeah. think he, it's possible that he'll mm. play again mm. in when he's 34, but he's not going to be the guy that everybody yeah. relies on to, to carry the load. I think it's for the both of them, okay. for, for, for Ronaldo and for Lionel Messi. Mm. This is the World Cup where you make the statement, where you carry your team. All right. Let's move on to the next matchup. Defending champion Germany against number 15 in the world, Mexico. Uh, how do you think the title defense uh, will go for Germany, Natasha? Well, I think that, of course, um, Germany coming into this match, during the qualifiers, they won 10 out of the 10 games. So you know that they've been performing. They're still on that track. They're, you know, they have a good chance of doing it back-to-back, of winning that World Cup back-to-back. You know, they're a very strong team wherein you have flexible players. You know, I've been reading up about Germany as well, and, you know, they've been... Uh, with their defense, they're trying the three back, and then the fluidity of their midfield and the attack, wherein you can't tell between the midfield and the attack. So, you know, they have good flexibility with the players as well. So, you know, you have top caliber players who are able to play flexible positions. Jing, Marielle, do you agree that uh, Germany has a big chance of going back to back? I think so. I mean, I'm a Germany fan, mm-hmm. but I think more than that, it's because you see the development that they've had in the years. Germany has dominated the youth um, league, their youth national team. So you see like Mesut Ossil starting from their youth national teams moving up. So you, you see their players um, being groomed at the youth national team. So a lot of them have played together. And um, like what Natasha said, you have players who play midfield, and um, you can't tell if they're midfielders or strikers. They've pretty much even changed the way goalkeepers play with Manuel Neuer. So a lot of the countries actually uh, base their program or the way they play with how Germany has done with their football program. I think that's the key, the cohesiveness of yeah. the team. You know, um, I think that's what brought them to glory in 2010, and they've done a great job. Um, or rather 2014 and and they've done a great job in keeping that core stable Mm -hmm. and the system the same you know it's this is not uh, a super pack lineup that's got all the superstars in the world and you're gonna put them in one team and we'll see what happens no they they have a specific structure specific style of play and if they're able to implement it correctly they have a great chance of defending all right. Now, I think uh, when it comes to the top five teams in the world the team that has the biggest competition when it comes to their opening matches, is Brazil because they're going up against Switzerland, who's number six in the world, and uh, this is sort of a uh, chance for redemption for Neymar, who got hurt during uh, the quarterfinals of the previous World Cup. Um, how do you think Neymar stacks up against the legends of Brazil, like Pele and, and Ronaldo? What do you think about that? Well, I think there's. I mean, Neymar is a very, very good player, um, but in the last World Cup, there was just a lot of pressure on him to carry the team and at that 
um, at that World Cup, I don't think he had the ability or the capability mm -hmm. to, to um, overcome that pressure. I think what's good with the Brazilian team now is that he has other players like Coutinho, Willian, helping Neymar uh, now. So maybe that he'll be able to um, contribute. And plus he got injured in that last World Cup. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the World Cup where he really has the opportunity to shine. All right, um, let's jump now to England and Belgium. I, I think there are a lot of uh, things to discuss here. <laughs> Siyempre, ang uh, England, new look. A lot of, uh, or rather, uh, ang Belgium, new look. A lot of guys like Romel Lukaku, Eden Hazard, Vincent Company. So what do you think about the Belgium side, who's uh, number three in the world? This is a team that um, can't seem to get over the hump, can't seem to make it to the top, but they are always solid every World Cup. Yes, it's going to be such an interesting first match between England and Belgium because like on one side you have Belgium. They're, they've been the dark horse the past couple of World Cups and coming into this, you know, they have what it takes. On paper, they're good. And on the other hand, you have England who have just uh, gotten rid of that golden generation and are now with a lot of young, fresh players, mm. of course, being led by Harry Kane. Mm. So, you know, it's really like two teams that you would love to go up against each other because they're both th they're both coming in this with very different stories but somewhat always seem the same in a sense that you know Belgium always have it and England as well like on paper they're always good but somehow they fall short and hopefully that's not the story again this year okay uh, Marielle and uh, Jing reacted when you mentioned the name of Harry Kane well why is that <laughs> well everyone loves Harry Kane um, you know you have someone like him who scores a lot of goals in the in the Premier League and you I mean I think you know he has the opportunity to lead England now with a lot of the young players so like what Tasha was saying it's interesting to see what the result will be between Belgium and um, England especially because Belgium on paper also has a lot of of stars as compared to England all right very quickly uh, Jing how would you compare Harry Kane to when David Beckham was starting off as a star <laughs> for England I think it's. I think David Beckham brought a, a bigger profile, obviously right. because he was a celebrity off uh, off the field as well. Harry Kane is, is is very much known for his his ability as a footballer. And the interesting thing about Harry Kane playing in this game is the fact that there is no pressure, not as much pressure on Harry mm -hmm. Kane as there were in the generations of David Beckham and the rest of the of those uh, players. It's kind of, sort of like they switch roles. Mm -hmm. Belgium now has the pressure on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the young players who have a lot of promise. They were promising players. Four years ago. Now they're expected to deliver. The England crop right now, they're the promising young bunch now mm -hmm. that are not expected to deliver. So mm -hmm. that weight off their shoulders is a new dynamic for England. And I think that could, you know, that could be a real benefit to them this time around. All right. Great analysis and insights from our football analysts, Natasha Alquiroz, Jing Hamlang, and Mariel Benitez. Guys, thank you so much. And I hope to see you again soon right here on The Score. We've got football every day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score and don't forget to subscribe.